right? So let's, let's get started. So with that said, yeah, this will be recorded as you see. So if you have any concern with that, then feel free to drop off. So other than that, welcome to this uh, seventh episode of the GitHub Roadshow that we at Solidify are hosting. And uh, this one will be about migrating from Azure DevOps to GitHub. Uh, an interesting topic. And um, this is me, Matthias, uh, the CTO at Solidify. Work a lot with uh, developer technologies, um, all sorts of platform related work, but also uh, coaching and, uh, and implementing uh, new ways of working and new technologies. And today we also have Madis here, one of our consultants. Hi, Madis. Hi. Uh, which uh, are doing uh, a lot of migrations. So uh, that's one of his specialities, including being the main maintainer of our Jira to Azure DevOps tool. So great to have you here today. And of course, the uh, the, the usual suspect, Magnus, of course. Uh, Hello, guys. Joining today, hi, Magnus. Um, well, probably has um, more experience than uh, you wished, Magnus, in uh, everything migrating, migration, and uh, consolidating, and uh, Azure DevOps TFS related. But yeah, now also, uh, yeah, been spending more and more time with GitHub, of course. So with that, this is uh, a series of events that we've been doing for uh, uh, since uh, a couple of a month before the summer. And uh, again, this is the seventh episode. We try to keep it to an hour. We keep it uh, over lunch, so it's easy to uh, to join. Um, it's virtual, of course, these days, and uh, and something we we do for free. So um, great that all of you could join today. We've um, prepared some, some nice content uh, for you. And Solidify, for those of you who haven't met us before, we're a consultant company in uh, Northern Europe, uh, Stockholm, Göteborg, uh, Copenhagen, Oslo, and uh, Tallinn. And we focus on helping customers succeed in, in delivering software, uh, building and delivering software. We uh, focus a lot on, on uh, development processes and the development platforms like GitHub and Azure DevOps, for instance. Uh, we've been working closely with, with both GitHub and Microsoft for, uh, for a long time as well. So we really, really enjoy sharing what we have learned over the years. So um, just get in touch if you have questions after the uh, seminar or anything else you want to discuss related to Microsoft and GitHub and uh, anything in that space. So what we've done so far, a uh, number of, of uh, sessions already covered, anything from code collaboration with GitHub to, uh, to the pipelines and workflow with GitHub Actions and, uh, and how we could manage work. Uh, all of these are recorded, so if you want to, and you missed one of them, want to go back, just uh, check out the link we'll share in the end of the meeting, if Magnus hasn't already. Uh, and we have more stuff coming as well. If you uh, want to participate, that would be fun. Just reach out to us. If you have topics in mind that you would like to hear more about, that's also interesting to hear. And we'll try to uh, to take that in account for what we plan for, uh, for the coming events. <clears throat> All right. So the topic for today, um, why move from Azure DevOps to GitHub? Uh, isn't already Git Azure DevOps uh, the perfect platform that we've been advocating for many years? Um, we think so, but there are also uh, uh, things that we hear that could motivate looking into to, uh, to moving to GitHub. And we're hearing uh, all sorts of ideas. This could be an interesting thing and, and something that adds value to, uh, to the team and the development uh, in your organization like github can be a neutral platform for the enterprise sometimes we have uh, not only one platform like azure devops but we have uh, the atlassian stack ibm tools and whatnot 
uh, GitHub has always been perceived as a neutral player, so that could be a way to, to avoid politics uh, internally. So that's a that's reason to consolidate on GitHub. Um, it is a great platform for open source, and now with, with the inner source trends, uh, it has a lot of good capabilities for teams to, to share work between them, to, to uh, collaborate on repos uh, and so on. So uh, um, even if we can do most of that in, in other platforms like Azure DevOps, uh, GitHub has sort of had that uh, behavior from the beginning. Uh, there's a lot of advanced technologies coming into GitHub related to security. So, and, and of course, uh, open source is, is one of the drivers. So with the openness, there's always a risk that people take advantage of that. So uh, that might be one of the reasons why GitHub is perceived as, as a good platform for, for uh, maintaining code and development work in a secure way. But there is a lot of good uh, tools there for credential scanning, uh, dependency scanning, uh, and so on. So we can get in control over vulnerability threats. And then there are also piling up lots of new interesting uh, tools and techniques like uh, code spaces that we talked about uh, in an earlier session where we get a virtual development environment uh, closely together with our repos in GitHub. And it's super easy to, to uh, quickly get started and contributing to, uh, to code in a, in a GitHub repo. Um, so there's a lot of things we hear that, that um, opens up for a discussion if it's uh, a good idea to, uh, to start looking at more at GitHub and possibly also move to GitHub. Uh, the last one we threw in is, is a new thing that uh, was announced now 1st of October that is kind of an enabler. So if you already have Visual we Studio. Have, Matthias, we will have to wait to talk about that. So it might be something coming in the future. Okay, so we'll. Uh, Sorry about that. We'll leave it like that. Yep. Uh, all right. So if you decide to uh, to to consider this, and this is kind of the the scope for this session, is that then you should have a a process for it. So we wanted to to today share our experience doing this type of migration work. Um, uh, but a few things that we want to to uh, bring to attention before diving into the details is that. Uh, if you're unfamiliar to, to GitHub, then you should learn more about the platform before you, you do anything uh, radical. So start small, proof of concepts, let one team uh, start, get experience, and then uh, more of the other teams can follow. Um, because there are, as we will see, a lot of similarities, but also differences. Since we've been doing migrations and consolidations to Azure DevOps for a long time, we know about how important development data is. So think about it as, I mean, it is production data for, for the development organization. So uh, losing that data, losing history uh, can be a big thing. So think about fidelity, uh, what has to come over, uh, how you handle data that can't move um, and, and what consequences that might have. And with that, we also suggest thinking twice before moving, uh, some parts um, in the platforms might not be uh, really in par with each other. So then we suggest integrate before moving, uh, like we talked about also in an earlier session, that there are great integration points between uh, Azure DevOps and, and GitHub. So, uh, so that's something we could take advantage of. And that also helps the migration process because we don't have to do everything at once. We can start with some parts, move those, integrate with other things, and we get a really nice unified platform with Azure DevOps and GitHub. So it's not either or, it's, it's the best of both. And again, look for, for low hanging fruits or uh, where you get most uh, bang for the bucks and, and pick those projects, repos, uh, areas first. Like for instance, um, shared components where we can start uh, doing more in a source work um, that might be good candidates to uh, to leverage the potentials in GitHub and understand how to work with that, and then you can move more teams as you as you mature. So with that said, uh, you still want to move, or maybe 
will stick to Azure DevOps because we know what it can do and, and so on. But let's say we, we think this is an interesting thing to, uh, to move parts of our, our development to, to GitHub. Uh, I first wanted to share a little bit about what, what we have and what we get and what we possibly lose. So both platforms, they are really rich in capabilities. So Azure DevOps, as we know, it has uh, dashboarding capabilities, good wiki for documentation. We have boards for planning, repositories, uh, CI, CD pipelines, artifact stores and test plans. So essentially everything you can think about when it comes to, to the big picture of everything a development group needs to, to, uh, uh, to build and release products. GitHub kind of has the same things, um, but also some additional tools uh, and, and capabilities like uh, GitHub Pages, a framework for, for, uh, for documentation, more like a web page than a wiki. We have the advanced security and dependency management parts and code spaces. So looking at it like this, we see that we, we have some parts that only exist in one place and uh, a lot of shared capabilities. And of course, uh, um, we need to be aware of that the green ones here will have low or no feature parity. So dashboards, yeah, we might set up something similar in a, in a wiki. So we have a, some, some mapping there. But for test plans, there is no equivalent in GitHub. So that's, that's an area where we, where we get no feature parity. And we can share these two links uh, in, in the chat here as well. If you want to go into every bits and pieces of what's in the platform. So as we can see, this, this page here is about features in Azure DevOps. And there's tons of features, of course. Uh, and in GitHub, we have the same thing. Uh, so we could just dive into the detail and and start uh, comparing notes and see what could do what. But these are good assets when you, when, if you want to do a detailed um, feature mapping analysis. All right, so we want to zoom in on, on the stuff that are kind of the same. So big wikis, planning tools, uh, the code parts, the pipelines and, and package management. So first I'll just do a quick, uh, Roundup of the things that um, we won't demo, and then hand over to Madis and uh, Minus to uh, to be a bit more concrete. And I'll start with with some uh, of the high level parts. So documentation, for instance, we have um, solutions in both Azure DevOps and GitHub. Uh, at the starting point, uh, the wikis are kind of similar. So we have a project or a wiki in Azure DevOps. We can have multiple ones in a project. In GitHub, we have a wiki per, per repository. Uh, we have a web editor in Azure DevOps, so it's more user friendly. We work in code in GitHub. Um, more integration with Azure DevOps on the Azure DevOps side, uh, but other options in GitHub like the README pages and GitHub pages. So this is an area where we feel that there's quite good feature parity. Um, there are no migration tools uh, for this, so we need to do the mapping and the, the migration by hand, but usually this is a, a manageable work. And the project Matthias, wiki is, this, is, this is stored in, in Git code, right? So you could move the repos and start start that way, right? That's a good point. So in, in Azure DevOps, all the wikis are, are Git repos. So it's at least quite easy to export all the markdown files and then we can, can move them over. So, uh, yeah, here we can probably uh, move if we want and bring bring the documentation with us, especially if it's uh, documentation close to the, the development projects. Uh, the planning area on the other hand is a bit trickier. Here we have rich functionality on the Azure DevOps side with backlogs, boards, customizable process. We have hierarchies of backlogs, um, rich analytics uh, and so on in GitHub. As we also talked about in a previous session, we have issues, uh, a pretty flat structure. Uh, we have the ability to work with milestones and projects. Uh, so it can be suitable for, for some type of projects, but not really large scale development as it is right now. So in this area, we would say it's pretty low feature parity, uh, also no migration tools. So this is a trickier area to, to try to migrate. Um, and we would suggest uh, 
stay in Azure DevOps and integrate with other areas uh, until capabilities uh, mature in, in GitHub. Third topic I want to touch on is uh, artifacts and um, also to, to rich platforms, um, Azure DevOps package management or artifact management has been around a little bit longer, so it's somewhat richer in a sense in capabilities and there's a bunch of package types as a nice uh, solution for universal packages where we can stick any large binary in, in, uh, in, the, in the tool. Um, nice integration with pipelines and also the ability to uh, to uh, to filter upstream sources and use Azure DevOps as, as a cache. Uh, GitHub uh, inherits a lot of, of the work done in Azure DevOps uh, from Microsoft, so it's kind of the same compatibility package wise, also supports container images. Um, so this is an area where we see that there is good feature parity um, if you want container uh, artifact management, then GitHub can be an option for that. If you have a lot of other binaries, maybe Azure DevOps is a better solution for universal packages. But for uh, regular development packages, uh, both platforms do uh, pretty much uh, the same and a, and a really good job. So I'm, I'm just doing the over, overview here. So. Uh, these three areas are uh, no migration tools. Um, you have to look closely at the feature parities to see if, if they suit what you need. Um, so next we will focus on repositories and pipelines where we have a little bit more exciting stuff to share. And Madis, you will go first and talk about how to move Azure repositories to GitHub. Yes, uh, so on to my topic. Um, uh, so um, moving Azure Repos to GitHub is, is uh, fairly easy due to the both platforms, uh, Azure and uh, GitHub are using uh, uh, distributed version control, uh, meaning Kit as their core, although they have built their own features on top of that. Uh, so uh, that, that being said, um, uh, you can move repositories, but uh, uh, due to the, the uh, uh, some of the feature differences that they have, uh, you will uh, it, it will complicate what kind of uh, metadata you can move in the end. So you cannot move everything. Uh, and the first uh, first way of moving repositories uh, from Azure to GitHub would be to use the GitHub's own import uh, service that they have already built. And um, with that. Um, uh, so that that supports uh, Git uh, moving from Git uh, subversion Mercurial or Team Foundation server. Uh, uh, what you get with that service is you can get all the branches, commit histories, and tags. Um, but there are some metadata that you don't get, which which are the PRs, uh, pull requests, and uh, user mappings between uh, AD and your GitHub handles. Uh, but what the tool in that uh, in that uh, gives you an option that you can match your uh, users to the commits, but uh, to do that, um, first you need to make sure that all the contributors have uh, their GitHub handles created. Uh, and another uh, point there is that the, the email that they use in the source uh, must in in the source environment uh, must match the email that is created in GitHub. So that's how GitHub uh, matches them uh, during the import. Uh, what else you don't get is the uh, branch policies or comments uh, and etc. Uh, which is good after the import uh, is that uh, the GitHub does find uh, the so it says branches, it does find the differences between the branches and then offers you to recreate your pull requests uh, that might have been, so you can uh, create them. Uh, there are limits of, uh, of the, uh, um, uh, with this uh, service as well. So you, you cannot have uh, files bigger than 100 megabytes. There's a limit on how big the repository itself can be, uh, one gigabyte. Uh, but no, I think it was from 2015, they, uh, they uh, 
um, added the option, uh, they added the uh, possibility to use uh, Kit LFS, which then allows you to have bigger files in your repository uh, to be moved. Um, and um, and during the import, uh, when you do have bigger files, uh, you will get the option either you want to move them or you want to uh, skip them. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, that being said, I will uh, I will do a, a a short demo how that how that works or how that looks. So I think you can move to the next slide, and I'll, I'll share my screen then. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yep, just a second. Um, so, so I have uh, created uh, a, a small repository on. Yeah. Can you maximize, please? Yes, I was about to ask that uh, <laughs> as well. If this is readable or not? Well, maybe so you could mac maximize the uh, window in, on. Yes. Yeah. I have a white screen, so I hope that doesn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a bit hard for me to read the text, but I think this will do anyway. And even more, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so I have a, a, a really simple uh, repository on Azure side, uh, and uh, I want to move that to GitHub then. So, uh, so how that works is on, on the GitHub side, can just create I need to zoom in here as well. I just create the new repository. Um, right now I'm gonna move it under my own username just for the demo purpose. Uh, and then you have this option here to import the repository. So uh, it's uh, quite easy. So for that we need the uh, URL uh, of, of the repository. So we can take uh, this one and then we can provide this here. We can rename the repository whatever we want, or we can uh, uh, keep the same name as we had there. So it's not up to the importer. But let's uh, uh, let's keep the same name. Let's say it's a private one, and I will begin the import. So uh, once it starts, uh, it will try to get uh, the the version control system and uh, all that it needs. So it will ask you to provide some credentials. And some, I mean, uh, this might be a bit confusing. It doesn't actually specify which, uh, from which environment the, uh, uh, um, the credentials should be provided from, either the GitHub one or the one for the source environment. But actually, it wants the uh, uh, credentials from the source. So uh, from Azure, it's quite simple. You don't. I mean, one option is to create the path and then use that and your uh, username or just generate it through here and you can uh, uh, get those credentials that you can use let's copy this one as well and supply them here and submit and then it's just a little bit waiting or it depends on how large your repository is will depend on how long it will take uh, so one thing that I don't get is the uh, uh, is the uh, so my my username from Azure to Git uh, GitHub won't be matched uh, because uh, I'm using different emails on those uh, uh, environments, so it doesn't offer that. Otherwise, it would offer here uh, during the import that uh, after the import I can. Uh, manually match the users and then th those will be, will be rewritten in the commit history. Uh, or if I would have uh, had a bigger file, you would, you would have gotten an option to either skip it or uh, uh, move that as well. So now I can move to the repository and so what I do get is I get all the history, I get all the branches that I had uh, in my Azure. So I had um, uh, three branches here. Including the master, and, uh, and uh, I get all that method. Which is, I didn't have any tags, so that's why I don't get any tags. So what what I meant by uh, being able to recreate the pull request is that it finds some differences in the branches, and then you can uh, recreate them basically, which is uh, nice. kind of uh, cool in my sense, uh, in my opinion. 
Um, super easy to, to get to this point as well, so that's nice. Yeah, uh, exactly. So that's that's w one way to go, but uh, let's say you might have more repositories you would want to move, you wouldn't want to do that uh, one by one by clicking. Uh, so another option uh, to get the same result is to use uh, a, a scripting, for example. And um, for that, I just for the demo purpose, I have created a uh, a PowerShell script uh, that does the same thing. So it's it's quite quite simple. So I have a configuration file here. Need to really uh, yeah. increase the font size a little bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Control plus, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I have a small, <laughs> I have a config file where I have the paths here and then I have a array of uh, different repos that I can then supply. And so I need to um, yeah, tell what the, what the repository name will be on, on GitHub side and when, what I'm actually, what I want to get. So what the script does is, is uh, quite simple. It gets the JSON, creates some folder structure. It, it clones using the mirror tag. So you get um, all the objects uh, uh, from your, uh, uh, Git repository. Um, and the next step uh, is to uh, is to push that up to GitHub then and change the remote uh, change the remote and then push it up to GitHub. But before you can do that, you actually need to have a repository existing in GitHub. So for that, I'm using the uh, GitHub's own uh, command line interface, uh, which allows me to create the uh, repository under uh, either to my under my user, or if you have an organization, you can then, uh, there's a bit different syntax to create it under an organization. Um, so the first time you run it using the GitHub, uh, um, using the GitHub uh, uh, CLI, is that it will uh, ask you to authorize as well. So you will have to open it uh, in browser and then accept uh, that you allow the command line interface to, to access your uh, account. After the repository is created, I will uh, then uh, uh, change the uh, add it to the origin. Uh, I will push everything up and then uh, and then just uh, do a little bit of cleanup, and then I will do this in a loop. So, so that allows me to create multiple repositories if I, if I want to. So just to uh, uh, quickly, Maris, we, we have a question yeah. for Marcelo. Yeah. How could we manage the migration from one entire organization if every repo needs to create his own credentials? But I guess you only it's, you only need to, credential, to create the credentials once if you have uh, access to the repos, right? Uh, yes, uh, to my knowledge, yes. So I mean, uh, I would use Pats then because Pat, Pats uh, will uh, allow you to. Uh, do it more simply in that sense. So you can then, then, use, right? then use a path that has access to the entire organization and use that for the migration, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So you can Great. define your Thanks. scopes there. Yep. So just to uh, run the script, uh, you know how readable it is. Uh, so here the GitHub asks me if I want to create the local directory or not, but in this case, I don't want to do that. Can just uh, right, do its magic. And now for the second one, uh, same. And if that finishes up as well, I yeah, should be good to go. Uh, now, if I go to if I go to my account, I should have two new new repositories. Uh, yeah. Uh, so one was the migrate with demo the script demo, and the other one was demo script. So uh, yeah, they, they didn't have much content here, so just two uh, markdown files. But just to uh, prove the point, uh, it's uh, doable using scripting as well. I know there are already actually existing scripts that kind of do the same thing, so I don't have to uh, invent the veal again. And so you just can search for that. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think we can. Uh, Move on. Um, right. You want me to share uh, yes. slides again? Yes. If you right. can share the slides again. Uh, 
Thanks, Maddis. As we were here, so we've seen the demo, um, but you wanted to, uh, to to talk a little bit about other ways. So this looks like a very simple way to to get started. Yeah. Uh, and if you uh, only care about the repositories, the branches, then you're good to go. Exactly. So if 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 there are if there's other metadata that is needed to be moved, then uh, we have managed to build internally a, a tool that uh, does that as well, which which uses the uh, uh, GitHub and Azure APIs. So, th and that allows to get uh, the pull request data, do the user mappings, uh, get comments, pull request viewers, uh, and etc. cetera. Um, so I, I will, uh, yeah, then I've added some links on the uh, APIs on, on GitHub side as well, where what they support. Um, just to uh, quickly demo that uh, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, so how, how it looks like on one side and the other side, if, if that has been done with our tool, then uh, I will quickly share my screen and then show uh, and talk a little bit. Then we can move on to the next slide uh, and share my screen. Yeah, so, so we, we want to illustrate that it's, it's very capable in the sense of you can do much with APIs, so. Exactly, so yeah. yeah. So the source uh, source uh, repo is the same. Uh, there is no differences here, but this one actually has uh, some already uh, uh, active uh, pull requests and uh, some uh, completed ones as well. And uh, uh, comments in them. Uh, that being said, so uh, so the same uh, repository uh, uh, being migrated. Uh, Looks initially the same, uh, but uh, it does have all the same uh, uh, metadata as well. So, uh, yeah, I said that my, my, my own user won't get uh, actually mm, mapped because <laughs> mm. it's using different emails. But you um, get pull requests. Yeah, but I do get the pull requests uh, that were open there, and I do get the uh, closed ones, including all the comments that might have been inside those. Which is which is uh, really cool. That, that can be done as well. That's nice as well. Uh, exactly. So everything that was on on the source and environment, you will you will get. Nice. Yeah. Um, and yeah. That being said, that's that's uh, yeah. All from me. Thank you. And of course, just being modest, if you're interested in learning more about the APIs and and all that good stuff. So that was Git to uh, Git migration and Git in Azure DevOps to GitHub uh, repos. Uh, next, we wanted to, uh, to talk about some of the old good stuff that we who have been around for a while have learned to love, like Team Foundation version control and and source safe. So minus, what can we do about this? Well, let me tell you. I've been along for a long time, and when I started in the industry, actually SourceSafe was the version control system to use if you worked with Microsoft. And that came in 96, and they had SourceSafe 2006. Then it was replaced by TFS with Team Foundation version control. So I'm going to show you guys how to migrate both from Team Foundation control to GitHub, or actually any Git. I mean, you can, if you want to stay in Azure Repos, you can do that as well. But the demo is to GitHub. And also with uh, migrating from source safe to GitHub. So, and the reason I'm showing you this, I mean, you, most of you think it's, it's all legacy stuff, but actually, last six months I have I had four or five requests about moving from source safe to GitHub, and T Foundation control comes every time. Someone wants to start moving because lots of customers have legacy source control systems. So. We have a couple of different ways to move from Team Foundation version control to GitHub. The first one is actually the easiest one. It's the tip migration, and then we only take the latest. The pros, it's easy and fast, but we don't get any history at all. And when moving from Team Foundation version control, it's important to add a git ignore file. I'm going to show you how to do that soon. And the git ignore file with that, but you can make sure that no binaries and other unwanted files goes into GitHub. 
because we want our GitHub repository to be small and fast. And then we just push it to GitHub. The second way of doing it, it's the same way I actually showed it in when he imported a Git repo from Azure repos. We use the existing import tool in GitHub. It's easy and fast, and we also get history. So that is that is actually a good tool, but the code is not cleaned up. So if we have bad things in our code, as binaries or package files and such, they will still be there. And of course, you can click clean that up afterwards as well. So that can be a good option as well. The third thing, the third way to do it is to uh, migrate with history. And you can use, it's a tool on GitHub, the TFS to Git tool. I'm going to show you that pretty soon. And then the same way you migrate to Git with that tool and then add a Git ignore file to clean up. And also, I'm also going to show you how to use a function called git filter repo to actually move, remove stuff from all commits in history if you find bad stuff in your code and then you push it to git. So Matthias, I'm going to take over the screen and show you guys how to do this in a presentation. So let me share my screen one moment. I guess you see my screen here with a couple of command prompts. So the source I have here in Azure Depo DevOps is Team Foundation version control repo. You can see this symbol here. I have a couple of branches here. I have a dev branch and main branch with some stuff. This is an old project or the demo is supposed to show it as old because we have a package folder here like you had in the old days where you had all your NuGet packages with your code. And of course, when moving to Git, we don't want that. The history is fairly easy. I only, I mean, I added the files, I created a branch and did some stuff. So it's no big thing and it's just a simple demo. What I did after that, after I had this repo created, I created a repo in GitHub to do the import. And at the moment that is empty. Then I downloaded a tool. Let's see where we have that. The Git to TFS tool. All the links that we have are, are using during this presentation is posted in the discussion section of this presentation. But with this tool, you can actually, it's an add on command to Git where you can uh, run Git to TFS built in. It's built on Python. So it's really cool, really useful. So I downloaded that and then I ran it. When I, when, I, when I ran it this morning, it took some time, so I didn't want to, it took three or four minutes, I don't know why. But what it does, I run, when I installed this, it runs a command called git tfs. So git tfs and then clone, and then I just point out what I want to clone from which Azure DevOps repo. And you can, of course, go through service or server, it really doesn't matter. And then in my case, I had two branches, but I only wanted to migrate one. So I just point, pointed out the main branch. And locally, it, it initializes a local Git repo and uh, fetches my different commits here. And um, if you have a big repo, of course, it might take some time. And if you take a look how it looks locally here, I have my main branch here. It has created a folder for me. And I have all my folders here. So with doing this, I have a local Git repo. Next thing I want to do is uh, actually, I know that I have bad things in my code and I don't want to take those with me to GitHub. So I actually added another cool function to Git called Git filter repo. This link is posted in our documentation as well. So this is a really fast way to search your, your Git repo with its entire history to find good or bad stuff. And in my case, I want to see if I have any big files that I don't have with me when I move this to GitHub. So I have another command prompt here that I've prepared this. So I'm inside my repo here locally, and I will run this git filter repo with the parameter analyze. 
So it has analyzed my code and we have three commits. And it has a report here, git filter repo. And a file here we should take a look at. So let's go there. So we have here in git, we have the filter repo folder and analysis. And I want to, there are different reports that you can look at, but I want to look at here in the, in the path all sizes. And then I can see here my files and folders and which ones are biggest. And in my case here, I have a bad one here. I have the packages folder. That's also the biggest one. And I really don't want to have that folder with me when I go to Git. So what do we do? We will um, let's see. Run another command. Just take it with me. Git filter repo and search for package and invert paths. And that means kind of that I want to remove everything that has to do with packages from my history. Let's do that. So use force doesn't feel like a fast. Let's do that. That's a challenge when you when you rehearse and try things before. Yeah. So that yeah. you already done it. Yeah. So it did some stuff here. And let's see it run the analysis again. See if there's anything different. And of course I had this open, so I have to rerun it again. Here it is. Let's go back and see what happened to the files, path all sizes. And we can see it's gone here. We have a SQL file that is really big, but I mean the SQL file is code, so that shouldn't be a problem. So now we have a clean and nice structure here that we want to import to Git. But I've also been talking about the importance of Git ignore files. And Git ignore files will help you with not getting binary files into Git. And of course, you can create those inside GitHub, but I also have a cool site here, gitignore.io, where you can search for, like I want to do Visual Studio, no, not code, I want to do Visual Studio. And it will create this readme, or not readme, this gitignore file for me. With everything that, it, that you don't want with you inside. GitHub. And as any good chef will do or had done in your TV shows, I have prepared that as well. So let's just go back. I have a git ignore file here that I've created. I just copy it and go into my demo folder here and put it here. So we have the git ignore there. And of course, we need to run a couple of git commands to add it to the repo because now it's just there. And we will go here and do the git add star. And we will do a git commit. Yeah, we can see that we have one failed added git ignore. Yeah, good. And the next thing we do is to push it to git and then to do that we need to add a remote we'll just do that here so we connect this local git repository with our target repository in github so git remote add origin let's do that and last part here we push push it to github let's see if it works Otherwise, I have a backup plan as well. Mm. Looks okay. So let's go in here and just do a refresh. Yeah, we have our stuff here. And we can see a cool stuff from GitHub as well. It has found security vulnerabilities in my dependencies automatically when we import it. So this should be an actual next step to see what kind of alerts we have and to fix those because, I mean, this is old code. It probably has lots of bad stuff in it when it comes to dependencies. But I won't go into that now. So we can see that we have one branch and we have four commits. So it's a simple way of, well, maybe not simple, but it's a way to move from Team Foundation to GitHub with full history and everything. 
So I think it's really cool. I've written a blog about this with the exact commands and everything, and that's also in the documentation. If you see those in the beginning of of the of the meeting. So I would like to go back to you, Matthias, and go to the next slide. It is nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, th this is a great topic. We've done this uh, many times, and and of course the result will vary depending on size of the repositories and uh, how much history you want to to bring along. So you need to, to to try it out, of course, before doing a production migration. I see we have a question for Thomas Mortensen, and are all the demos viable for GitHub Enterprise Server as well? And they should be. I don't see at least the things I'm showing works both on GitHub Enterprise and on our both on server and service. And I think it's the same for Muddy stuff. We yeah. only have 10, 10 minutes left, so we have to maybe speed up things a little bit. Next is yeah. moving quite quite right on time. But um, yeah. this was the demo, and then you had your uh, your favorite for uh, for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. If you still use Source Safe. We can do the first two parts are actually the same. When we now we lost the picture, Matthias. When we <coughs> do a tip migration, the same way we do with Team Team Foundation version control, add a git ignore and push to get out. Now you have no history. The second one is all use Microsoft's old Visual Source Safety Team Foundation uh, migration tool, but then you get your code in Team Foundation version control, and then you have to move it from there. So the best part, as I see it, is uh, there is a real cool tool, and you see the interface of it, kind of cool as well, old. And then you can just use that tool to migrate Visual Source Safe to Git. And I know it, it really works. It's a good tool. This is like uh, building uh, your Raspberry Pi for arcade uh, retro games. So this is uh, the equivalent in, in GitHub then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesper wrote, in the old days, when you switch source control, you had to open your solution file in Visual Studio and disconnect some from source control. Is that something you need to do? Yes, I think it is. It's a good thing, Jesper, if we should have added it here as well. So let's right. go to the next part. Moving Azure Pipelines YAML to GitHub YAML. So that's an interesting topic. Let's see what we can do about that. Let's see if I manage to move next to the next slide. Yes. So both uses YAML, but the YAML is not exactly the same. There is no full fidelity migration tool, but we have an alternative we're going to show you further down. So movement is manual, of course, and you can't just take your YAML file in Azure Pipelines and put it into GitHub because there are differences. But we all actually found a guy on GitHub that has done a conversion project for this. So Matthias, could you click on that link, the green one, and open it, and we can just give the audience a brief view yeah. of how it looks. This is also a topic we talked about before. So uh, the, there is, um, I was just opening slow. Um, I mean, the GitHub action is coming from, from the same teams or, or at least inspired by the teams building pipelines in Azure DevOps. So that's why there are a lot of similarities. And, and this guy isn't from GitHub. It's just a source we found on GitHub, right, Minus? Yeah. So yeah. please select a simple something, .NET CI, down to the left, for example. And you can do the same with your actual YAML as well. You can just copy your Azure DevOps YAML, click it in here, and then process YAML. So it's cool. And it actually, it did much more than I thought. Some tasks that I didn't thought it would fix. So we have the trigger on both sides. We have master, or maybe you might want to say a few words, Matthias. No, oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. So we both have a trigger, both triggers on master. We have some variables. It's called variables on the left side and environment on the right side. We have jobs and steps and such. So, I mean, you see, the dialect is pretty the same, but not exactly. So if you want to get started with moving stuff, I mean, you should try this tool out and see how long you go. I mean, it would work for the basic stuff. Or the other option is to st start from scratch and, and doing your work, but this actually will give you help. 
it was quite fun to see that um, this uh, attempt to translation also handles the multi-stage uh, syntax in, in Azure DevOps, and we get uh, different stages for, uh, for jobs for uh, in, in GitHub as well. We have one question from Johan Roman as well. Uh, what is the biggest gain of going to GitHub Actions now? That's a good question. I would say it, it's the, then you have the pipeline and code in the same place. Um, but I mean, we, we still are mostly in, in Azure DevOps uh, at this point with the pipelines uh, moving to, to YAML and the multi stage pipelines, and they are feature rich and nice to work with. And then uh, the GitHub Actions are catching up, just small. Uh, nuances that this still are, still aren't there like uh, um, if you have uh, environments and you want to have approval steps we don't have that yet in github actions but, it's but that's coming pretty soon i saw yeah yeah one advantage with github is that their marketplace is huge so they have lots of more add-ons than you have on them for, them for azure pipelines i think so there are pros and cons with both but i think Matthias, what he said in the beginning there if you have your Coding GitHub, you should consider maybe using Actions as well. So, I have a question for Jonas as well. Are YAML templates supported in this tool? There are templates at least, but uh, I don't know if you can create your own templates. Anyone that knows that, otherwise we can find it out and get back to you guys. We will check that and get back to you, Jonas. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure if it's as rich as it is in in, uh, in uh, Azure DevOps yet. Well, were you thinking about uh, uh, converting them, the templates, or just using the templates? No, I, in... I think if you want to create a template of your own in GitHub and use that for your new actions. Hmm. I mean, you could yeah. use, I mean, you could like the project we did in the office where you actually create something and put it on Marketplace and reuse it. I don't know, let's get, let's get back to that. I, mean, I, 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 can, I can just uh, ask the question here instead. Uh, oh. you, you can extract steps into templates so you can reuse that template later on yeah. in different stages and such. Yeah, so that's what I that's expect kind of that you meant. So that feature is not in GitHub. Okay. As, as yet, it might come, but not, not, not right now. All right. So Great. templating doesn't exist. All right, thank you. I guess, so that uh, was all for this yeah, demo. Yeah. And there's also a real good, I mean, that link from Microsoft with Microsoft recommendations, how to handle YAML, and it describes the differences as well. We'll post that as well. Mm. And then you have to, I mean, lots of good examples and what you should consider when moving. So even if there are tools like this that can help in some other translation and, and uh, get you to a starting point, you still need to, to figure out what to, to map to. And um, again, if they get to the, the templating, then of course that can speed up the migration. So this is kind of one of the borderline players as well on where to start with the migration and so on. So if maybe this is viable and uh, something you want to do already or uh, it makes more sense to start with the repositories and do uh, and, and keep the pipelines in Azure DevOps until um, there's a reach of feature set but again depends so, on so Martin posted something in the chat and he said the sharing it's a link with the github sharing workflows for user organizations so you can actually create workflow templates that's good all right thanks Martin Great, so we're close to the hour. I guess we've done the demo and uh, we'll do the wrap up. So we have one minute or so for, for additional questions. Um, we uh, have the recordings in on this link here and you can find, navigate through that from, from the web page as well. Other than that, I guess in summary, Magnus and Maris, we can say that um, uh, two great platforms I would still look first at integrating then migrating everything because there's not a one-to-one -one feature parity like if you wouldn't expect if you move to to another third type of platform so uh, all depends uh, the repo part is obviously really strong in github 
that might be appealing to start with and then uh, keep boards and pipelines in, in Azure DevOps and, and integrate. But again, do the, the homework um, and see what works out. And uh, I mean, eventually there will be more tooling from, from Microsoft as well, but there's no ETA on that. Um, but of course, they, they have an interest in making sure it's easy to, to use both platforms in a good way. Just like we have when moving from on-prem TFS Azure DevOps to uh, to the cloud service, but for now it's uh, uh, the the tooling we've shown. Uh, the APIs are rich, so you can certainly do a lot of this in good fidelity. Uh, we're happy to share more details, so just get in touch if you want to discuss uh, what you can move and, and and not, and what's easy and what's hard. But with that, hopefully you have ideas on. Uh, uh, why to move and how to move and of course integration is, is always uh, a good combination. Something you want to add Madis or Magnus? No, if you have no. ideas for coming topics or want to speak at one of our events please get in touch with us. Great. And I mean no. We will post, as Matthias said, the recording will be posted at YouTube and we'll show you guys the links. And we will also post links for our upcoming events as well. Yes, exactly. Okay, thanks for all attending right. everyone. Thanks all, have a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.